Okay. Okay, we're back live at VMworld 2012. It's in San Francisco. This is SiliconAngle.com's coverage, exclusive and continuous coverage of VMworld 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we are on day two, closing out day two. A couple more interviews uh, coming up, uh, but day two is quite the event here. A lot of activity. Pat Gelsinger was on here for 20 minutes with us as the CEO of VMware, and a great conversation, a lot of great interviews from AT&T, startups like Arista Networks and just a lot of great conversations. So we're going to go to Kristen Nicole, who's at our news desk right now, uh, East Coast, and she's going to bring us all the latest news. Hi, Kristen. Hey, John. How's it going? So, Kristen, what's the latest uh, action you have over there to share with us? What's going on in the, uh, the VMworld related activity since we talked yesterday? Well, I uh, actually heard that the roundtable last night was pretty interesting. I was going to get your thoughts on that. Um, some of the stuff that Michael Dell said about the post-PC era is still working out really well for him. That's been resonating uh, throughout the, the news today. Yeah, the CEO roundtable was very interesting. I thought it was a really fantastic show. If I had an uh, animator, I would have had a cartoon strip immediately on the network right after that because it was quite the uh, display of CEOs. Joe Tucci, the elder statesman. Paul Moritz, the mad scientist, professor, kind of leaning back. George is really kind of figuring out what to say. Pat Gelsinger holding court, and Michael Dell trying to get his points in. Really interesting. Uh, but more importantly, it was uh, really a great event of the CEO is really that's looking at trying to create, recreate this industry uh, around software defined networking, software defined data centers. So I thought it was a very interesting uh, set of CEOs. Noticeably absent from there was. Uh, was uh, John Chambers. So uh, don't know why Cisco wasn't up there, but uh, again, outside of John Chambers, I thought it was a great activity. And even Cisco's been doing some more stuff with virtualization, as many of the other companies at that roundtable uh, really speaks to what's going on with VMware right now. And Project Octopus was some other news that came out this morning, seeing some more integration with uh, especially some of the acquisitions that we've seen over the past year, as well as the new initiatives that have been going on. What are you hearing about that? I couldn't hear you, Kristen. Sorry, the noise up here that they're playing air hockey and video games. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> I was asking about Project Octopus, seeing some interesting integration into VMware products this year. Hello, we're having technical difficulties. Let me put my earpiece on. Not technical difficulties, I just, uh, I can't hear you. But while I'm, while I'm getting my headphones, uh, on Kristen, what's new in the Apple Samsung uh, dialogue on the web? What's the latest uh, activity around Samsung and Apple? Well, the aftermath is starting to settle in. Still conversations going on around what the impact is for Nokia. It's positive. Microsoft and R RIM as well. Um, seeing some opportunity maybe for the anti-Android campaign, but then on the flip side of the coin, there's some pundits coming out saying that maybe this case is going to eventually, the ruling rather, will be overturned um, and that the jury was filled with Apple fanboys. Seems fanboys are taking over every corner of the world. Maybe we're still having some Sound issues over there? No, I'm good. I can hear you now. Um, so what's the big data and storage news on your end? Well, some of the things we're seeing, big data, of course, uh, riding the big wave of the big data hype beautifully, is Splunk today. They have a new product out called Storm. It's the cloud-based version of their log data management uh, system. And it's one of their more bold moves into the services space. That's one of the areas of interest for a lot of different companies right now, from Oracle, VMware, SAP, and really figuring out how to layer in the best of those services, especially the ones where analytics are deeply integrated. Uh, the more you can combine the cloud and big data and analytics, the better. So Kristen, share with us what's on the site as terms of news on SiliconANGLE right now. Um, and give us a quick rundown on the SiliconANGLE news around VMware and also what else is happening outside of VMworld in terms of news. I saw some stuff around Splunk and some other stuff. Yeah, well, speaking of big data, there's a really cool way that it's being put to use. Interesting. Um, there's a team out at Rice University looking to put analytics and big data to work for storm pre pre prevention, rather, uh, prediction. And 
managing the risks around things like Hurricane Isaac, very timely uh, application for them to put out there. Um, that was one of the big stories that came out this morning. Um, Always of interest is stories that look at the ways in which big data can be applied to everyday situations. And uh, speaking of hurricane season, actually we have a list that went out this morning of apps and services. Google launched a service this morning uh, to track storms on, on a map that is collaborative data from a lot of the weather centers around the country. And you can check that out, siliconangle.com a list of apps and services, as well as tips on emergency preparation for keeping in touch with people that you may know in the Gulf Coast area, or just things that you can do to be ready. You know, Kristen, I noticed um, um, there's some uh, info, Chimp has some news, I'd love to get your take on that, but also I want to just uh, highlight that, uh, you know, Om Malik had a post about Evernote, and uh, he's basically admitting that Box.net and Dropbox don't have as much traction as uh, most people think, where Evernote is actually crushing it in terms of growth and uh, revenue uptake. So I thought the, the uh, Ohm Malik story on GigaOhm was very interesting around Evernote. Um, so what's your take on the, um, on the InfoChimps? What's the story with InfoChimps? Well, here they have new leadership in place, so it'll be interesting to get more details on what's going on over there. Uh, InfoChimps has been active lately. They got to got to speak with them at South by Southwest and a couple other times since then. and. We're going to definitely get a chance to talk with that new CEO. Um, I hear he's at VMworld, so lots going on over there. Kristen, great to see you. You look fabulous. Uh, great to have the new remote capability in. And for the folks out there, um, this is a new feature of SiliconAngle.tv, the Cube, where we can now bring in not only Kristen and a great news team analysis and all of her senior editing capabilities, but other guests. So now you don't have to be actually at the event to come join inside the Cube. We can bring you in. Uh, via Skype, so we're really excited by that. So, Kristen, great to see you, and uh, thanks for all your uh, help there, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. You too. See you tomorrow. Okay, that's Kristen Nicole on our news desk. Uh, you're going to see more of that kind of coverage from SiliconAngle.tv and SiliconAngle.com. Again, all the videos for all of our Quebec News are on uh, YouTube.com slash SiliconAngle, and of course, go to SiliconAngle.com for the reference point of tech innovation and Wikibon.org for free research. So. Um, We'll be right back here at VMworld 2012, right after this break. More continuous coverage from SiliconAngle.com, theCUBE.